Hi guys. Well, it has finally happened. We have hit the 90s. It is finally, this is the first day I have seen since leaving Austin, Texas on March 13th that I have seen 90 degrees in the year 2019. It is now Wednesday, July 3rd, one day away from America's birthday and uh, July 3rd, 2019, and we do have some good news about Sancho Panza. He has taken his first pee, so I guess his bandage was not quite as tight across his pecker as I thought. We're now waiting for the first big adventure of the first poop, and I want to welcome a new character. This is Humpty Jr., you won't be able to read it. He has his own We Are So Fucked sign. So say help. Oops. You just lost your We Are So Fucked sign, Humpty. Oh, God. Humpty falling off the wall. Get back up here, Humpty. Nope. Anyway, guys, there is... Obviously, I have had a... a lot on my tangled mind this uh, the past few days and uh, I want to come back and we're going to uh, share one of the best comments I have heard uh, here in the comment sections from alert listeners and I don't know how long from Julianne Myers summing uh, answering the question that I posed yesterday, am I the only Doomer strangely calmed by the collapse of a planet? But before we <coughs> get into that comment of the day, uh, I, I, guys, I just want to say, uh, Sancho Panza and I, we, I, I, I am truly touched by the outpouring of support that my kind-hearted and alert tribes members have seen to uh, help me out with the thousand dollars or so in vet bills that I have gotten the past few days and so I'm still not through with the trips to the vet uh, because so what what happened to Sancho is there doesn't appear to be an actual broken bone. That's the good news. And he is peeing. That's the good news. There does There's no blood in his urine. Uh, we're waiting for the first poop. So what happened was when he hit the ground, he knocked his right thigh bone out of his hip socket. And uh, the little dog has no way to get comfortable. Uh, so he knocked his bone out. Now, now the good news appears to be, there, there is some good news here, guys, that, you know, the problem with the collapsed trachea that I've been trying to pop out or get back in its socket for the past week, apparently the, the impact of the collision with the ground when he jumped off the two-story deck after that chipmunk. It appears to have put his trachea back on track. So I think we have solved the trachea problem. We've just traded it. But anyway, uh, that is the update. And so a week from today, I'm going to remove this sling. We're going to get him re-x-rayed and hope to hell they say there's a 50-50 chance, let's hope to hell, that uh, this is the end that the x-rays show that it took and we don't have to go for surgery because I don't even want to think about that. But anyway, guys, I'm just going to send out a huge thank you for the folks covering the vet bills so far and uh, probably the two or three hundred dollars I'm going to be spending next week. And we're going to start with Brother Peter, Brother Peter Evans from New Hampshire. I am uh, 
All I th thank you, brother, and, and, and I'm just going to go down the list. This could I could break into tears, or this could take all day. Okay, in no particular order. Uh, thank you from the bottom of my heart, really, to Sister Susan, Brother J Tree, Lisa and Jim, and our Brother Michael Daniel. We cannot forget. Sancho's uncle Osama number five, right here in uh, the Catskill Mountains, Eric Powell, where uh, we think this whole misadventure started in Eric's woodchuck pile. And uh, I I anyway, uh, thank you very much, Brother Eric. Brother Gary. Thank you, and of course, it goes without saying, uh, Sancho Panza's two aunties in the, uh, in the tribe, Aunt Sandy and Aunt Johanna, both pitching in to his recovery fund. I don't know, I guess O'Dwight, his brother O'Dwight. Thank you, Sister Sherry. Um... Sister Megan, Brother John Gilmartin, Sister Carol, of course, Sancho's Uncle Vegematic. You've never met your Uncle Veg, hopefully someday. Uh, Donna and Greg, Emily Lyons, thank you very much for that kind donation. Free Bear, Maggie May, over there from the Maggie May channel. Elizabeth, that's from Humpty Dumpty Tribe and from the Collapse Chronicles Tribe. I want to thank big send outs to brothers Malcolm, uh, Sister Jan, I guess it's Sister Jan, Brother Gary, and Aunt. Aunt. And once again, guys, I mean, it, it, I, I cannot tell you how, how touched I am by this outpouring of support uh, for this little dog. You know, the, these vet bills were, well, by the time they come in next week, th they will have eaten three months of my rental income, 25% of my annual income outside of what I receive from kind-hearted tribes members. 25% of my annual income will have gone into this. And uh, I'm thinking of getting pet insurance for Sancho because something tells me this is not uh, with this dog. So we will see if we can uh, get some pet insurance. But anyway, guys, before I... Before I start crying, let's move on to uh, <clears throat> one of the great comments <coughs> that I have received from uh, this year. You know, I, I did this, I, you know, I was wondering, I honestly don't know if this rant that I did yesterday titled, Am I the Only Doomer Strangely Calmed by the Collapse of a planet. I might have to do a part two. I honestly don't know if I was being ironic or serious. I thought I was being ironic. Uh, in, in, anyway, but uh, Sister Julie Ann Myers sees no irony or humor in uh, the whole situation. So take it away, Julie Ann Myers, and answer the question, am I the only Doomer feeling strangely calm about the collapse of the planet? No, Hambone. I am not there yet. I don't think my constitution is wired that way. I find absolutely no calm in this storm. I've been at this for 39 years since I first studied the greenhouse effect. Despite being 62 years old, 
every report still enrages me. What would be calming would be to know that we, meaning we humans, are going to exit gracefully. Yeah, good luck on that, Joey. Leaving all the species of life to carry on without us as if we were never here. I haven't reached the grief stage yet. I am in perpetual fury that seven stages of grief, is it five or seven stages of grief? Anyway, that seven stages of grief crap and all of that other self-justifying, self-coddling, psycho babble is nauseating, especially when applied to the death of a living planet. The hubris is unspeakable. We care about nothing but our own comfort. Always. What a stupid species, culture, and civilization. We're no less primitive in our spiritual beliefs than we were 5,000 years ago. We drink blood and eat flesh and glorify a God that demands human sacrifice. That's how our God saves the world. It is horrifying. Grown-ass people telling themselves bedtime stories and singing lullabies to themselves, whether it's, the sun will come up tomorrow, get happy, let it be, or why don't we do it in the road? We're a bunch of pansy-ass shits, self-centered motherfuckers. We never deserved this planet. We left Eden of our own accord eons ago. And I see Julianne Myers has five thumbs up, but I just made that six thumbs up. And thank you, Julianne Myers, for... Uh, for that excellent comment. I, good Lord, guys, I could go through a lot more of these uh, comments. Uh, let's just do a... So, Sister Sandy, I am calmed. I can't control anything but myself. <coughs> and my... Uh, response to that is, I wish I could control myself. I would be making $100,000 per year, living in a gorgeous home in South Austin, and might even get laid once every five years if I could control myself. Of course, I would burn in hell for eternity, but we all have our priorities. Yes, Hero Font says Doom is basically like Xanax for me. Yes, uh, Maggie, you say everything we're thinking, but don't have the balls to say. Okay, let's see. Uh, Michael Daniel, uh, yes, okay, two more. Michael Daniel, <clears throat> yes, I experience the calm when reading such news, except for those ones about dying animals, birds, reptiles, etc. Those stories sadden me and also anger me. Lately, I have been feeling the calm when the small handful of economists I trust lay out how the whole house of cards is coming down this fall. When that happens, 
I will be so calm, I'll probably need medication to increase my blood pressure. Oh, and the coming food shortages in the Western world not only calms me, it brings a state of almost nirvana. I can't wait until masses of clueless, arrogant, asshole <coughs> Murricans start dropping dead, especially those fuckers with the MAGA hats. That will be a high greater than what every drug on earth could give me combined. And uh, since we uh, started with uh, vet bills, we're going to wind up with this comment uh, from Deanna Demers. Good old Deanna. Any question can be answered by your vet. My response to Deanna, yes, such as, do you accept cash? Yes. Will you take a check? The answer to that question was printed right there at the checkout that they would very gladly accept checks. Do you accept all major credit cards? Once again, the answer posted at the checkout desk, we gladly accept all credit cards. Do you have an installment payment plan? Again, the answer was right there at the desk that they do. I did not ask the vet, will you let me shovel dog shit out of the kennels for $15 an hour for 56 hours to pay this five hour vet bill? That would have been the one question my vet would have answered no. Yes, these are the questions that your vet it wants to hear from you. It's the question that anybody wants to hear from you. Anyway, little dog, you have not eaten. The little dog has not had a bite of food in two days. We're going to see if we can get his appetite up. Hang on to the wall while you still can. Bye, guys. Okay, little dog. I know it. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna make some pork chops. See if you, see if you want a pork chop. He's been living off of ice cream. Uh, that's what he's been living off of today. Oh, Jesus. Dogs. Gotta love them.